Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how to get Catch2 set up uh, to work on your programming quizzes and test them because it is required for programming quiz 3 and then you can use this process for any other programming quizzes you might want to do like this. So let's get started. First of all, there are a couple different methods we can choose. Method 1 uses a remote uh, code space through GitHub where basically you're doing all of your coding in a remote virtual machine which means you can access it from anywhere but it might run a little slower than you're used to. Method two is just installing uh, or is getting the project set up locally and will be a bit faster and will also let you use C-Line instead of just VS Code if that's what you prefer. And then finally, method three is the simplest where you just run a command or two, um, but you don't get any extra nice features for doing the testing. So with that being said, let's first start with method one. And note that all of this, this should be linked on the project document and also in the bottom of this video. So you can just read through this by yourself if you want. But for actually using uh, Catch2 and the code space, definitely watch this. So first we'll start with the code space. Um, note that there is a limited number of hours that you can use it for technically, uh, but you could extend that by getting the GitHub student developer pack. Um, it's like 60 hours even if you have the free account, which should be plenty um, for anything you'd be doing in this class. But I'd recommend getting the student developer pack anyway, because it comes with free GitHub premium and also a bunch of other stuff. So let's uh, make our code space. So first of all, you're gonna to wanna to scroll up to the very top of this repository, and that'll take you to this big green use this template button, because this is a template repository. So we're gonna click this, and you could just open this in a code space, but then you wouldn't get all of the Git features. So the best thing to do is to create a new repository. So we click this, and now you can make a copy of this repository um, in your own GitHub account that you can push and pull from, um, and have your own changes stored on it forever and also be able to access it on other computers. So to do that, we will type in our repository name. I'm just gonna do DSATA or no, DSAPQ3, sure. You can name it anything you want, it doesn't matter. Um, you can give it a description and then be sure to make it private because if you make it public, other people could see your code and try to plagiarize it and we don't want that um, for you or them. So with that being said, we can click create repository and this will take a second or two to actually run. Um, whatever they're doing on their back end is what you have to do here. And so now we are in. So this is an exact copy of the template in the state it was when you clicked use this template. So here's all the instructions again, but now you have it locally. So with that being said, we can actually get into our code space. So you're gonna to wanna to click this little green uh, code drop down button. And um, you might get started on the local tab. If you are, just click on this code spaces tab. And we, here we are in the code spaces interface. This is where you'll see a list of your code spaces. We don't have any right now, so we can either click this plus button or this big green create code space on main button, which is what I'm gonna do. So we click this, and now uh, your code space is gonna take a minute or so to generate. Um, and that's kind of a big, or that's something you're gonna see a lot. Code space works, it works anywhere, and it's definitely guaranteed to work, but it might take a bit longer to do stuff than you're used to with testing or getting set up and stuff like that. So if you don't really wanna do all that waiting or if you're confident in your ability to set up uh, your local environment, which shouldn't be that hard, hopefully, um, it might be a better idea to download locally, which we will do at some point in this video. And I will also timestamp that in the bottom if you wanna want to just skip to that. Um, but this part of the video will also show the VS Code workflow in general, um, because that's all the code space is just remote VS Code. So um, we can wait for the rest of this to finish compiling. I may or may not edit this part out Ah, uh, no, it's almost done. We don't have to. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so this is the final steps. It's installing some programs. It's uh, installing a custom CMake. And then once all of that fun stuff is over with, there we go. Okay, so now we are into our code space. Um, it needs to set up the remote connection. And uh, this is also gonna take a couple seconds to actually get set up. So it's gonna load in all of the UI elements, the colors and stuff, um, and then Usually, yeah, it opens the README right here. I have a dark mode extension, which I just turned off. And now we're in. So this is likely to come up, but it may not. But if it does ask you to, um, select just the top option, because this is the only CMake list we include in the template. So you can just click this and we'll configure that properly. And then finally, make sure to click a kit. So choose GCC, because that's what, co or that's what um, Gradescope uses. Clang might work, but it might not work how you expect it to. So just use GCC and keep stuff simple. So it's gonna do all that. It's gonna configure your CMake project. 
Um, note that if these options for whatever reason didn't come up the first time you saw it, what you can do is um, come over to these like three lines, go to view, open the command palette, and then you can type in CMake configure and it will do the same thing. It'll ask you for a kit if you didn't specify one and do all this. So we don't need to, but that's an option um, in case that didn't work. So we're in, we have our project set up. Where do we go from here? Well, now um, you can, let's first explore the directory. So the way we have this arranged, we have our um, source folder right here and this contains all of the code that matters for us. So we have our interquartile range.h. This is the provided template from Educator. There's no changes here. Um, so you can use this in the same way. And then finally we have our test.cpp where the magic lives. So in test.cpp, um, we have some stuff to get catch set up. All this is already done for you. Um, and then we have our actual test cases. So in case you haven't used catch before, a quick little intro, basically you define a test case with um, test case in all caps and an underscore. Then in the parentheses, you say um, the name of the test in quotes, these have to be unique. And then you have the, the flags, which don't have to be unique. So this is a list of any number of um, flags. So we could call this like flag two. And these will let you um, sort your tests. So say you only wanna run your tests for edge cases or big inputs, you could flag it. You could flag each test like that and then um, group them by those tags to let you test it more easily. So that's a thing you can do. Um, so in your actual test case code, it's just regular C++, you write whatever you want. And then when you're ready to test for something to be true, you do require. So require in all caps and then in parentheses, you have some statement that should evaluate to true or false. So this is obviously gonna evaluate the false because one is defined to be one and we have zero here. And then finally, you can also just like simply put false. And so all of the individual require statements need to evaluate to true for the test case itself to pass. So let's try that. So to actually test, um, you can one, go through the GUI, which is like this. I'm gonna move it up just so it's a little more accessible. It's this little, um, I guess, vial icon. So you're gonna notice when you first go into here, um, nothing set up, there's, they're saying test not built, it's not showing anything. So what you wanna do is click up here and there's a little refresh test button. There's a shortcut if you want it. So if you click that, it is going to um, actually get the test set up. So the first time it's going to actually build catch two because we have catch two, um, we have CMake pull in the catch two code and then build it with our project. So this first time it's gonna take a while because it needs to actually build catch two. Um, but after this testing should be very quick. You can make a change, hit the little test button and it should update immediately. Um, should is the keyword, but from what I've seen, it does. Um, if it doesn't, you can always hit the little reload button up there again, um, just in case. And that should make any updates that need to happen, happen. So this is all doing its uh, thing. Great, so now we can see all of the tests we have. So we have our original example test name, we've got test two, and then we have our um, test cases that were given with the educator template. Um, and you can see we also have the hidden ones. So uh, uh, note that these sort alphabetically. So if you want them to be in some order, um, you wanna name them alphabetically. Great, so let's say we just wanna test example test name change me. So we can test this, press this little run test button, and we will see that it fails. And it's gonna tell us why it fails. It's gonna say, well, on the left side, we have something that evaluates to one, but on the right side, we have a zero and that's false. So that's a problem. And then of course the second, I mean, so as soon as one of the requires fails, everything's gonna fail. So it's not even gonna move on to the rest of this stuff. But assuming that we fix this, we can just save our file, hit run the test again. And we're gonna see that now it fails because we have um, require false. So if we just change this to true and then save our file, command S, however you like to do it and hit play one more time, we now have our first passing test. And you'll see that's a little green check mark right here. So if you wanna run all the tests, that's simple. You just hover over the name of the main thing, hit play, and then it'll run all of the other tests. And we can see, um, and we can see which ones pass. Test two, I make to pass originally. Um, and of course I have some documentation sprinkled in here. So if you're curious about how to do something like maybe make a test section, just read up on that, um, look at the example. So with that being said, this is how you work with a code space in the web browser. Say you have a bunch of extensions in your VS code that you like or themes and you wanna use those instead. Um, to do that, what you can do um, is just click these little three lines and you can say open in VS code desktop. And if you do have VS code installed on your computer, it will, um, you might have to allow it to do this with a prompt. So you can say open link. Um, and now, uh, yes, open it will actually go ahead and open up your um, your workspace or your code space in your local VS code. So 
um, all of the development and stuff, all the commands that you run are still happening in the cloud, but your extensions such as, for instance, I have the um, file indicators, like the icons extension. If I go into test.cpp, I have the Vim extension so I can do all the Vim stuff. Um, all of that is there. So you can use your own custom environment, but still work in the cloud. And if you change something, you can access it right away. So let's say you um, want to switch to a local test environment now. Uh, well, to do that, it's pretty simple. You just need to download the repository as normal. Just clone it to however you want to, open the project up in your preferred editor, and go from there. So if you do VS Code, note that it is mostly the same thing. Um, you just need to install the extensions that I have installed in the container automatically. So make sure these are installed. Everything should work the same way as how I just spoke about how to do it. Um, and then beyond that, um, <clears throat> beyond that, what you can do is um, just clone it. So yeah, well, one more thing with testing, I forgot to mention. Um, if like, for instance, you have a bunch of failing tests, like if we do these tests and we see that they fail, it's kind of, it can be kind of hard to read here. If you want color here, just make it a little easier on the eyes. What you can do is come to this uh, CMake window instead right here. And what happens in the CMake window is um, this is basically like um, the guts of your CMake project. So what you can say is just launch and you can say plus or, and it'll choose your tests and then it will move on to, um, sorry, I don't know what that was for, um, but you can do your tests and then it will open and then it'll be the same output um, from catch, but it'll have colors. So that can be a little easier on the eyes. So that being said, we have uh, our code space open in our local VS code, everything's great. What if you wanna run this locally? Let's say in C line. Well, that is also very simple. Um, so again, you can just clone the repository however you'd like to. Actually, before I do that, um, make sure that if you want your changes from the code space to actually be in um, what your repository, you have to push and pull like from GitHub, just as you would normally with a regular GitHub project. So um, code space is gonna reopen, sorry about that. We can come to our GitHub tab right here, or our, Git, our source control tab, and then we can, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, we can click all of these. Um, we can either click and stage them individually or we can just say commit and push, um, which I prefer to do. It'll say, hey, you haven't staged your changes. Um, where is it? Oh, it's not showing it, but I do not want an update. Um, yeah. And then you can write what your um, changes are. It might ask you, hey, you haven't staged any changes. Do you want to stage them? Just say yes or however you want to handle it. Write your commit message. We can say, um, fixed test or something. Um, then we can hit the little check button, accept the commit message. Yes, please save my changes. Great. So um, once you close that or like hit the little check button, it'll push it up to GitHub. So now we can close our uh, code space safely, come back to our GitHub repository, refresh, and we will see that indeed we have our little fixed test commit and we can see our changes just like with a regular, um, with a regular GitHub type thing. So great, we're in, we did all that. What if we wanna use this in C-Line? Well, this is actually really simple. So you can go back to the local thing and grab the SSH or HTTPS link, however you authenticate your GitHub or your Git account normally. Um, what I'm gonna do is show you guys how to use C-Line. So we can just launch it up, launch it however you launch it on your computer. Um, I use Linux, so it's a little different. And then finally, um, you can either download it to your computer like this and then open it with the open folder dialog type thing or you can use this wonderful get from VCS option where, so you can just paste the URL to your GitHub project and it will um, create that directory and open it. So I'm just gonna call this one cause I added one of these when testing. Um, and so it will ask you to authenticate your GitHub, GitHub account if you haven't before. So just go through that. It'll go with JetBrains, really easy. Um, so yeah, authenticate all that and then you should be in. So now you can just say trust project um, and then now you're in C line. So it's going to ask you to do a bunch of project setup. You're good to just leave all of these as the defaults. Um, and so with that being said, I don't have GCC installed. So <laughs> this demo is not going to work. Um, I, I just, I just installed this, so I don't have a couple things set up, but so I don't have GCC installed, but assuming that you do actually have a compiler installed, um, you should be able to run, um, your CMake and stuff like that. So sorry about that, but hopefully, the um, C line or yeah, the C line testing workflow is shown 
as a separate video in front of the quizzes. So if you need to reference that, you can look it up. But otherwise, here you are. And then if you want to uh, do stuff with Git, you can click this little version control tab and then do the same stuff. If you want to commit, you could do, um, I believe it's control K and it'll pull up a commit window where you can um, talk about your different files, do your commits, all that. So with that being said, that is method two. If you want to use it locally, make sure you have Git installed, make sure you have GCC installed, <laughs> unlike what I did. Um, and then finally, the, um, the barest of bones method, you can just um, do everything from the command line. So you run the compile command um, and then run the commands to actually run your tests. And so you have to change one thing in the um, CMake or in your catch file. But aside from that, that'll just work if you run this from your project directory. Uh, yeah, so with that being said, this is how you use catch2 testing. Feel free to reach out to me, Paul, uh, the TA. If you have any questions about this, I will be happy to help or update the documentation and stuff as required. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much.